tonight, new laws to protect gay students at schools. But is the ugly battle about rights versus religious freedom over? A quiet street taken over by heavily armed police in a dramatic 11-hour siege. How officers finally took the man at the centre of it into custody. The PM's new plan for Australians on the dole. Help farmers harvest or forget getting your payment. Celebrity royalty joins the real thing for another star-studded wedding at Windsor Castle. But Princess Eugenie didn't let anyone steal the show. And hearts racing across the country. Melbourne has a spring in its step at Caulfield, while soggy Sydney ciders watch Red Zell conquer the Everest. This is 10 Eyewitness News. First at five with Narelda Jacobs. First tonight, the Prime Minister has moved to put an end to an ugly battle over gay rights versus religious freedom, vowing to change the law so that no student can be expelled from a school because of their sexuality. But the shift in the PM's attitude has some wondering if he's trying to protect students or to protect his government's chances at a crucial by-election next weekend. Phoebe Bowden reports. More heavy rain has extended the misery for Queensland towns trying to clean up following Thursday's destructive storms. Tegan George joins us now from Nanango, 150 kilometres west of Brisbane. Tegan, how are people coping? Now, Coolabunya is right next to the town where an 11-year-old boy was crushed by a falling tree on his grandmother's property during yesterday's storm cleanup. Connor Cray remains in a critical condition. He is at the Queensland Children's Hospital in Brisbane, being treated for serious injuries to his head, chest, pelvis and legs. We're told his condition hasn't changed since he was airlifted there yesterday afternoon. But emergency Emergency crews are praising his distraught family who used a four-wheel drive to remove the tree and quickly free him. Thanks, Tegan. Australians on the dole are being called on to help the country's struggling farmers. Job seekers will be sent to regional areas to help during busy harvesting periods. And if they don't go, their welfare payments could be frozen. Alsha Coppolina reports. Princess Eugenie and her husband, Jack Brooksbank, have celebrated their wedding with a star-studded reception following their lavish ceremony at Windsor Castle. Eamon Ashton Atkinson joins us live from Windsor and Eamon. That would have been one hell of a party. So Australians will have their own chance to mingle with royalty this week when Harry and Meghan head to Australia for their first royal tour, which kicks off on Tuesday. Norelda? Thanks, Eamon. Thousands were trackside today for two of the country's biggest horse races. The world's richest turf race, the Everest, saw punters trying to conquer wet weather in Sydney while the sun was shining in Melbourne for the Caulfield Cup Carnival as tens of thousands turned out to dress up, be merry and maybe even see a horse. Annie Kearney reports. But still to come, the road tragedy that's put laws for unborn babies in the spotlight. A drug cop mystery that's ended in murder in suburban Adelaide. Police turn up the heat on warring bikey gangs. And the Jamaican juggernaut Usain Bolt finally gives football fans something to cheer about. A cannabis heist is believed to be the motive behind the brutal bashing murder of a man found dead inside his Adelaide home. The property had been transformed into an elaborate grow house, but most of the crop was stolen by his killers. Hannah Ford reports. New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian will consider changing state law to criminalise acts that lead to the death of unborn babies. It follows an horrific crash in Sydney's west this month that killed a heavily pregnant woman and her teenage relative. An unlicensed driver has been charged with two counts of manslaughter over the crash, but under current law can't be charged with the deaths of the woman's unborn twins who were due just days later. Christian Democrats Fred Nile attempted a similar review in 2014, but it failed as the legislation he proposed didn't protect women seeking abortions. A pilot has had a lucky escape in Victoria after crashing into high voltage power lines. The 48 year old was flying in the state's western district this morning when he was forced to make an emergency landing at Darlington. The chopper's windows were shattered in the crash along with some minor damage. The man was taken to hospital with leg injuries. 
WA police are cracking down on bikey gangs as they fear the public could get caught up in the crossfire. A series of raids this week saw around 20 guns, drugs and cash found, with 15 members and associates of bikey gangs charged. It comes after a long-running feud between local gangs, which has already seen bashings and shootings. The WA government is set to introduce anti-consorting laws aimed at tackling bikey crime next year. Up next, picking up the pieces after Florida's Hurricane Michael. Melania Trump's unusual response to questions about her husband's infidelity. Also later in sport, Usain Bolt's dream of becoming a professional footballer enhanced with a double. And an emotional Julian Wilson reveals who inspired his Quicksilver Pro win in France. Towns in six US states are in tatters, with thousands unable to return home to assess the damage caused by Hurricane Michael. Now a tropical storm, Michael has drifted towards the Atlantic Ocean, leaving at least 16 dead and hundreds more missing in its wake. Sydney Pede has more. A shopping centre being built in northern Mexico has collapsed, killing at least seven men. Rescue crews are cutting through slabs of concrete to find nine missing construction workers who may be trapped. It's believed work was being carried out on the three-storey mall without licences. An American pastor has been freed from a Turkish prison after more than two years behind bars. Andrew Brunson, who was accused of spying and aiding terrorists, was sentenced to three years jail but was allowed to leave the country immediately due to time served. The president says Mr Brunson will visit the White House in the coming days. The first house in Florida has gone for a swim, crashing nose first into a backyard pool. Nine children were on board the bus when it hit a car, making it swerve off the road and through a fence. The homeowner helped get the kids out through the back doors. No one was seriously hurt. Still to come, all the action from the world's richest turf race at Randwick. Plus, the hunt begins for this machete-wielding convenience store bandit. And Invictus Games athletes demonstrate the healing power of sport at Bondi. A 22-year-old man has spoken out after a terrifying carjacking in regional Victoria last night. Tyler Pratt was threatened with a knife and told to hand over the keys after he pulled over to the side of the road in Bendigo. Tyler managed to drive away unharmed. Police are now on the hunt for the man described in his late 30s with a beard and wearing a grey hooded jumper. It's time for sport now with Jonathan Williams and Jono Usain Bolt stars for the Mariners. He did. He's, he did. He's on the improve. Thank you, Narelda. Hello, everyone. Coming up, it may have only been a trial, but lightning strikes twice on the Central Coast. The eight-time Olympic gold medalist is a step closer to realising his A-League dream. Also, after two years, there's still been only one winner of the Everest. Redzel does it again. And have you seen a better rugby league try assist than this? The stars of the future on display in New Zealand. He's gone from centre stage to the director's seat. You ready? Now Lisa's got the first Aussie take with A-list actor turned filmmaker Bradley Cooper. Here Gaga and Coop's behind the scenes secrets of A Star Is Born. But I'm not very good at keeping secrets. <laughs> Only on The Sunday Project. Welcome back. Spring racing is in full swing in Melbourne, while the $13 million Everest topped the card at Sydney's Randwick Racecourse. And it was Red Zell who did it again and now sits only behind Wondermere Winks in career prize money. Charles Christian followed the action. That looks like a lot of fun indeed. It does. It? Thanks it's very much, Jono. Coming up next, Amanda Hart has all the weather details. Tonight's top stories, Scott Morrison has vowed to change the law that allows religious schools to discriminate against students because of their sexuality. But the shift in the PM's attitude has some wondering whether he's trying to protect students or his government's chances at winning next weekend's crucial Wentworth by-election. Unemployed Australians could risk losing their dole payments if they refuse to go to regional areas to work as farmhands. The federal government's proposal is part of a nationwide plan to help struggling farmers in the upcoming harvest season. And the Queen's granddaughter, Princess Eugenie, has married long-term partner Jack Brooksbank in the year's second royal wedding at Windsor Castle. Princess Charlotte and Prince George played starring roles during the lavish ceremony, which was followed with a star-studded reception.
joining us now for an update on all the weather details is Amanda Hart. And Amanda, a severe weather warning is in place for parts of Queensland. As the southeast of the state cleans up Norelda, potentially severe storms are brewing in central and far northern parts. Now, the only good news about this is that it's bringing mid to heavy falls to drought ridden inland areas. Now, we can see the huge band of cloud that's bringing all that wet weather. It's stretching down into northern New South Wales as well. Now, again, it is reaching parched inland areas, and that's very good news. Onshore winds are bringing some patchy low level cloud to the New South Wales coast. That's bringing a few showers. Further south, the cloud is in the bite is bringing the odd shower. Now in WA there's been a few relatively heavy showers in the west and in the south. They're being triggered by low pressure troughs. There's another trough through South Australia which is bringing the weather there and in the east the high that's bringing the onshore winds is also creating large and powerful surf to the New South Wales and the southern Queensland coasts. Today in the capitals, it was cool in Brisbane with showers and patchy rain. Cloudy in Sydney with a shower or two, mostly in the afternoon. Melbourne was mostly sunny and warm. A very hot day in Adelaide and a partly cloudy day in Perth with a shower or two. Tomorrow, more showers for Brisbane. They should start to ease in Sydney. Hot in Melbourne, 29 degrees in Adelaide. But showers will develop and showers with a possible early storm in Perth. I'll be back with more weather soon. Norelda. Thanks very much, Amanda. And that is 10 Eyewitness News for this Saturday night. I'm Norelda Jacobs. Thanks for your company. I'll be back with headlines a little later. And of course, you can visit our website, 10daily.com.au. I'll see you the same time tomorrow. Good night.